People see you for who you are. I would say in the Philippines, it's still there. I know the West is losing it big time in many countries. I can't say all countries because I haven't been to all countries. But I was reading something earlier about the this girl. That's, her photo was stolen and she was put in some contest about being ugly or whatever. What is wrong with people? I'm not, I'm not being funny. Um, the I was watching Chloe. Chloe the... Um, What's that, Chloe? The perfume advert. And I was looking at the girl on that, and I just, you know, for the advertising, and she just looked anorexic to me. So I think it's all perception, but for me, I don't go, she's really skinny and disgusting. I just go, she looks skinny to me. It's, it, I mean, there's April will tell you, I analyze people, um, not in a negative way, by the way. I just look at people just for boredom's sake. Um, there's like somebody at the school where her feet are like about this size. I'm just like, how does the body balance itself on those feet? You know, when you sat waiting for kids, this is the sort of stuff that goes through my head. <laughs> but the whole point in the Philippines, people don't care. They're quite happy that you're just a foreigner. They're quite happy just to know you because they, they were, most of the time. The relationships seem quite odd sometimes. In, in Western eyes, some of the relationships would look up. Because you've got some really stunning women. And their boyfriend, husband can be 20-odd stone and whatever. And they're content. As any, they don't see the way. They don't... I mean, okay, f fair enough. I do know that sometimes you do hear conversations relating to um, expats where somebody will say, why are you with that old fart, etc.? But even then, it's more to do with their classmates and stuff saying, look, come on, you do it obviously with them for the money. <laughs> so that's the problem I'm understanding more than I should do is because I, I would say I'm eavesdropping because it's their fault that they assume I don't understand what they're saying. Um, but the, the point is you do hear this stuff going on. And the old fart wasn't me, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, the the normally the the discussions about I think the guy's seventy or seventy five, but the discussions between the classmates going, come on, do you're not doing him because you love him, and this is going on right in front of me. But the the whole point is generally, generally people are less fake. Now I'm not saying less consumer consumerist. Because they aren't. That's why the mobile phone's king. Latest mobile phone will always be king. Hail the iPhone. Um, but what you get is that they see people as people generally. They don't really bother with the weight issues or stuff. And I've never seen anybody go, oh, well, and run somebody down. They may argue about stuff and know stuff about people. But generally, they don't. Stick it on Facebook. <laughs> you know, it's not a... Um, it's not analysed in an X-Factor way, which is the way the West has gone. It's, um, it really gets under my skin, because if the if this generation is like this now, what's it going to be like in two, three generations? Are we just going to be more like... Uh, what's that movie? The Prey or something, where they... The call I can't remember. Well, they just go and kill everybody one night a year with the people. They set their settle their vendettas with people um, for as part of population control once a year, because people are losing the whole point here. You're supposed to have emotional feelings about other people. Um, I mean, I generally don't run people down unless they deserve it. <laughs> you know, if they've been attacking somebody. Um, uh, Whose channel was it on the other day? Uh, life, life is a curse or something. Now, you can correct me because I know I've got it wrong. But I was on his channel and he's talking about his life. And somebody else is going, oh, well, you're such a loser in the US, blah, blah, blah. What are you talking about? Firstly, you should be privileged the guy sharing his information. But also, the guy is actually saying how things have improved over the years. There's no... Nobody asks you to run the guy down. Nobody stepped up there and says, hang on, have you got an opinion? Oh, yeah, you want to be the... the tw I'm trying not to say a bad word. The person that will run somebody down just for the sake of it. But then again, you don't want your life analysed, do you? Well, you don't want to analyse. Don't go on YouTube. Okay. 
that let's go back to a dictatorship then we'll all be happy no freedom of speech freedom of information and also showing that you can change is the important bit and that's why i got a bit frustrated i think a gift of curse or something i can't remember his, i know he's on my channel so you can correct me and you can even put some of the links back to his own um videos where people have made some quite nasty comments but the whole point is these people need to get out more not a uh, gifted curse that's who it is um the fact is that he understands where his life come from and going he is on the right path most of these other ones that will run you down etc have no idea what they want to do in life and they don't get it they don't get the value of people etc they may be on wife number five or whatever and then they're sitting there all bitter it's the five wives fault and uh, it's not a drinking habit it's it's just cologne <laughs> um whatever it is it doesn't matter the, these people just need to lighten up a bit life is bad enough as it is uk entering into syria today is sort of like with my head because the US and others have been there last year and achieved, um, oh yeah, nothing. Um, and it just seems that the UK is stepping in for the wrong reasons. I think it's more to do with British interests, pushing politics aside. Um, but the, the whole point here is just be yourself. Because most people in the Philippines do see you as who you are. I know they all have the debate on, oh, he's a millionaire sort of thing, and you'll really struggle to change that. Um, I mean, the, the problem I have is we own two lots next to, to each other. We have a Pajero, we have a new motorbike, we have generators, etc., etc. People do perceive us as rich. <laughs> it's, but then again, a neighbor's house burnt down. Who's the guy with the water tower and the water pumps? N nobody hates us for what we do because we do a lot in the community. Um, we get on with everybody. Yeah. Generally, the issues we have are internal with the divide in the family. It's a big divide, which is still perplexing. The the uh, I think people are happier being on their own. I think that's the, that's, that's the reality of it. Because this divide is quite a complex one. And if I did a YouTube channel on it, I would get so much aggravation for telling things that are seen as family. Um, so I can't really discuss it too much. But the... Yeah, I can't discuss it. But the, the whole point is, generally, Filipinos will see you as a person. They don't look at you and go, He's fat, he's tall, he's short, he's this. They generally don't bother. It's just not there. It's, it's not a lack of interest. It's just that perception is Western. You know, looking in the magazines and going, oh, I'm supposed to be like me. I'm morbidly obese, uh, according to the chart we have in the UK. Um, but... It doesn't measure your bone structure or anything. I have very little fat except for my stomach, which is related to Vito. The rest of me is rock solid. Um, there is no the very low body fat. But they go, oh, you're morbid or obese because you're, we, we've got this structure, which is uh, based on a weight to a height. But I'm very broad-shouldered. When I put a shirt on, I can't buy a shirt in Asia. Um, I can't buy a shirt in Spain because my forearms are at least a third wider than most other people. And there's no slack there. It's all because I used to do three hours in the gym when I was younger. So I've maintained a, a solid body structure, but I'm morbidly obese according to the UK. So be aware that perception is irrelevant. And I'm quite happy in the Philippines. People do not see people as this, that, or the other. Um, they do take it personal relating to mannerisms, which is why I say be the better person, um, be polite, etc. They appreciate it. Most people be polite to you, so give them the same respect back. Um, beyond that, Philippines are pretty chilled out. I don't get any stress in the Philippines, to be honest. The only stress I do get in the Philippines is relating to cash generation sometimes. 
um, when somebody owes me like fourteen thousand uh, dollars for the week, then I do get stressed about that because I got a bankroll for the uh, payroll, etc. But beyond that, the locals are fine. You know, it's like now if I went back to the Philippines now with the money I had in my bank, I could just sit there for a year, drink beer on my uh, veranda balcony uh, every day and do absolutely nothing if I wanted to. And you know what? Nobody would complain. Uh, although this video is a little bit long, I'm going to add a little bit here because I've just thought of a little story. I was working years ago. I, I used to come in off the construction and I'd work the winters in factories in Worcester. So the reason being is I want to get indoors to stop the chill getting in my bones, you know, because I've worked out in the snow and stuff. It's not nice. I've had, um, what do you call it, air compressor equipment stuck to my hand before because it's been that cold. So I'm in this rope making factory and we work the night shift. Now, the funny thing is the, one of the guys there, every night shift, he would, he would finish his night shift, go home and just have four ciders sat on his back door, um, just, <laughs> just chilling out watching the, you know, watching the sun and everything. And he would say, you could see these women walking past with the kids, you know, taking them to school, looking at him going, look at that drunk, drinking first thing in the morning, look at him, should get a job. <laughs> <laughs> just come off a 13 hour shift we didn't get 12 hours we got 13 because they wouldn't pay you for your lunch so you had to do a 13 hour shift and the guys just like have a few beers to go to sleep because you got the bin men the neighbours the digger you know general noise around you you had a few ciders that would knock him out until he had to go into the, his next shift but the people are like look at him he's drunk drunk again every day he's there <laughs> yeah Oh, I love the UK. All right, thanks for watching.